Hello everybody and welcome to this first building themed episode of my channel. Today we're going to be looking at some awesome starter bases that I came up with. Um, this one being the first. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk you through step by step um, my thought process and show you um, the block palettes I used and how I decided to use them, like my inspiration, all that good stuff. So I really hope you enjoy. Let me get my menu back up. And we, if we fly around to this side, we can see how this house is looking from all sides. So we have the windows that are fence gates. Um, we have this little awning, awned in area. And we have this little patio out front. I didn't do the interiors for any of these houses because I didn't, um, I'm not great at interiors and I didn't think I needed to for the purpose of this video. But it gives, I'm, from the inside, um, without all of the stuff that you would need in a regular starter house, a little bit of a church aesthetic. Um, of course, it's just a regular old starter base. Um, these are all starter base I ideas and designs. I'm going to walk you through exactly how I came up with this. I was watching um, some green videos, some smallish beans videos. I'll link them both down in the description. And I was getting a lot of building ideas, so I thought that I would just um, whip up some cool little houses and stuff that you guys might enjoy. And then, you know, this was decoration that came after. So for this one, I wanted to do just a basic block palette of oak planks, um, stone brick, I threw a little bit of spruce in there, and then I wanted to, you know, wrap this around so that it wasn't all one block, because that would look kind of bad, so I used polished granite. Um, so what I did here, I also used cobble. So this is just a basic, pretty much first day starter house, as long as you have access to spruce, and you dig down a little bit, and you get some, uh, if you have access to some oak. So, the first thing I did was lay out a base, and this base is 10 by um, 7, and then I, to add a little bit of depth, I added these pillars on the side and used fence gates, I mean fences, as the windows. Now, something that I forgot to add over here that I think I will add now is a really cool idea that I got from Mythical Sausage, I can also link his channel down in the description, but... Um, no, let's not use dark oak, let's use spruce, is using these campfires as awnings, which we will get to um, once I'm done talking about the rest of the build. But yeah, if we open them all like this, then it looks like the campfires are kind of being supported by these fence gates. And we could do it all the way down. Um, I'm not, just, you know, because I want to be able to get through all of these. But yeah, so I laid out the base, the 10 by 7 added these um, pillars. And then I was trying to figure out a roof design. So that's where Grian's video came in. Um, he recommended these couple of roof designs. I really liked this one. And I also thought it was really cool doing the sort of rim around the uh, house. Because I think it adds a little bit of depth, a little bit of texture. And then you can also add, I don't know exactly what this is called, and I didn't fully make it a window because I was having trouble with that. But it's sort of like a window off of the house that also adds depth. So once I was done with the roof, I came inside and I added these lanterns. I made the floor fully cobblestone because underneath it was just dirt and I want and I raised it up a level. I did I raised it up a level pretty much all of these houses. Well, not pretty much all of them. And then I think the next thing that I did was um, I put in these campfires. And these campfires act as a super nice awning. If you um, have a shovel and you can the campfires can face two different directions right and then if you have a shovel you can put them out and so there are a bunch of different this like gives way to a bunch of different designs you can have like a checkerboard pattern you can um have like straight lines and then straight lines the other way um there are a bunch of different ways you could do it i decided to do just all the same way in a line um I think it just adds a little bit of depth to the build. And then I, I just added these fence gates, as you saw, because I think it shows that, like, it's holding it up. And then these posts are also holding it up, again, in creative. Um, so I think the next thing that I did was I wanted to add this platform. Again, inspired by Mythical Sausage. Um, 
and I mixed trapdoors and slabs in here, spruce slabs, um, and it basically just, you know, again, adds more depth. Depth is really important in building. Um, and so I, then I added these stairs to make, you know, so you didn't have to jump to get there. I, we want everything to be as easy and accessible as possible. Um, but yeah, I think that's it for this build. I think that it's a pretty nice starter base. Definitely very early game. Um, not super hard to build at all. It took me probably 15 minutes, I would say. Maybe even less. Maybe a little bit more. I can't remember exactly. But yeah, so that's that one. I would probably... One thing I would change is probably doing these supports all the way down the awning. And then also maybe adding a little window here like I did back there. But um, yeah, I'm not sure. So the next one that I did is this one over here. So I chose a different color palette for each one. Speaking of color palettes, let me show you the color palette for this one. Um, it was basically this. So you have your stone, you have your stone brick, you have your oak and your spruce planks. And then this was kind of just like an off to the side kind of thing. I think if we switch that around, it'll make a little bit more sense. And so that's kind of the palette that I went with for this build. You got the spruce, the oak, the cobble, the bricks, and the, um, the granite it's polished. So for this one, I did, um, the, the palette for this one was a little bit different and a little bit smaller. So I had the diorite and the white concrete, which I know not everybody loves. Um, and the dark oak, I used, um, stripped dark oak and, um, dark oak stairs. And I think that these colors, um, blend really well together. These are a nice contrast and these are also a nice contrast. So the dark oak kind of balances it out. So the first thing I did here was lay out a foundation, and I didn't want to make this one rectangular because I had made that one rectangular, and it's nice to vary it up a little bit. So I kind of rounded it up here, and then I just built up, all of them I think are four blocks tall. Um, you know, just the, the like basic shape is just four blocks, because if I come in here, that's three, and then the base. And then over here, if I break that, you can see that it's three, and then the base, but... Oh. Um, so, yeah. So, the next thing that I did was, yeah, obviously build up these three blocks, and then I did the rim of dark oak stairs, and then I kind of just went into, like, spiraled it until I got to the top, which I'm, I don't love, but, um, I think it looks good for the purposes, um, of this house. You know, it's just a starter house. It's definitely a little bit more late game with the concrete, um, and the warped wood, but definitely not too much later. Um, yeah, so I think, I think I had stair, I had, uh, slabs there originally, but for this next build, I used slabs and I wanted it to be a little bit different, um, in terms of that. So if we go inside, again, I didn't do an interior, but I have the stripped oak, the stripped dark oak wood in sort of a checkerboard pattern, and it kind of looks like, um, those uh, what are they? It's like peanuts. They're like, um, no, 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 they're like pretzels and they're filled with peanut butter. I feel like it has a nice curve there just like that. And then I just have this one long beam of, um, end rods in the middle. Again, those are much more light game. You, there are lots of different lighting options. You don't have to use that. But, um, for this one, this one is definitely a lot more light game. You have your quartz, you have your prismarine, you have your bricks, um, and you have your blackstone, which are, uh, the quartz, um, takes a while to collect. The blackstone is not as late game, pretty much the same as the warped wood. The bricks take a while to collect, and the prismarine you need a, um, you need to kill a lot of guardians for. Uh, so you might need a guardian farm. You can see, this one I did a little bit differently. So it doesn't have a door, and it doesn't have a rim around it. Because I didn't think that that fit the aesthetic of this particular build. But to start, I have my block palette. Um, here. And this one is a little bit more all over the place. You have your bricks, your polished blackstone, your, um, prismarine, dark prismarine, your, um, chocolate bars, and then your quartz. And I, I think that, here, if we reorder this, and maybe do it this way, I think that these blocks fit, um, relatively well together. Um, I think th those were the ones that I wanted to use, and I think that it looks good, so I'm just gonna keep it that way. But, um, this is a diagonal house, and diagonal houses are harder to build. You see, I had some trouble with making a door because I made it even instead of odd. 
um, so I'm gonna have to remember that for the future. But I laid out the base, and I wanted to do a diagonal one because I had done sort of a rotund one on that one, a square one on here, so I thought a diagonal one would look cool. And then again, built up the three blocks. I like four blocks as a um, basic um, shape for a starter house. And then the base, like once you go inside, it, it's three blocks tall, unless you have a roof like that. Because over here, um, we can see straight up to the uh, where the roof starts. Whereas um, in this one, it's blocked off and it, you, there was a ceiling here. I put a ceiling on. Um, so let's go back to this one. So I laid out the base. And then I stacked up with the, um, the blackstone bricks. And then I did just like sla quartz slabs. Uh, are these polished? No, just regular quartz slabs. And I just went around and around and around until I came to the top. And then I decided that I was going to add these dark prismarine. I was debating between more quartz or dark prismarine, but I didn't like that these... Look, if I, if I change that there, then it doesn't... I don't know, I, I don't like that as much because I feel like it, it's too blendy. Like it just b makes the build blend a little bit too much. And so I, I like the Dark Prismarine as an alternate choice. Um, so I d d had, you know, that it's six wide, so I had to have a door that did two spaces. And so I thought, that I found this cool, I figured out this cool design where you can actually, um, if I go into survive, you can basically flip the trap doors and then it puts you into crawl mode and then you can just come back through and then for this one it's the same thing you can uh, you can just um open the trap doors it puts you into crawl mode and you can come right through so um that one is definitely not ideal but you know obviously it keeps mobs out and um it, it's the best fit i think for this type of house um but if we go inside you can see that we made the floor out of bricks just like um just like the base here and then we lit it up with lanterns but if we were to open up the ceiling we put shroom lights um and the trap doors let light through so that's um why i had those shroom lights there i made sure that all of these builds are lit up so mobs cannot spawn in here but yeah this is a cute little um cute little base got the white windows to go with the um to go with the glass oh no I mean, the white stained glass to go with the quartz on the top. So, look, if I put these next to each other, you can kind of see they kind of match, um, because they're both white. And, yeah, so that was my three houses. I was debating on putting a railroad track here, but I couldn't quite figure out a design that I liked. You know, with the anvils and the slabs, I'm gonna have to work on that a little bit. But, this next part was, um was just, you know, I wanted to, a way to connect the houses. Obviously, um, you wouldn't build, like, uh, ideally, I wouldn't build three very, very different um, uh, houses like this right next to each other. I would have, like, different places where I put each of these houses because they're very different types of houses. This is, like, a very traditional kind of house. This is more of a, like, um, bright, vibrant house. And then this is more of a, like, nethery, darkish house. Um, so yeah, I wanted to connect them all because they were all close to each other. So I used path blocks, I used coarse dirt, dandelions, tulips, oak leaves, um, and that was just like some texturing. So I used the path blocks and the coarse dirt, and I kind of like laid a path, and then the dandelions and the tulips were just to like pretty it up a little bit. The oak leaves act as like hedges in a way. And then I saw this cool trick where you take bamboo and spruce leaves and it kind of makes these like little groomed trees, which I kind of love. And so you have the um, path going this way, it um, goes straight to that house and then it branches over here. Um, but yeah, so that's my walkthrough of this little area that I made. I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you next time with another video. Thank you all for watching. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. It's free and you can unsubscribe whenever you want. And don't forget to hit that notification bell to be notified every time I upload a video. Bye!